Well, she you going, boys. Mike here. Welcome back to Grampy's Workshop. Some nice that you're able to drop in. Thanks a lot for taking some time to watch my little video. Today's project in the workshop is an electrical one. Surprise, surprise. Uh, it's that time of year, the fall. Lots of snow, lots of wind, lots of rain, lots of power outages. So guess what? I have a job to do on the uh, extension cord I have for my generator that goes from the generator over to the camp. The, uh, the plug was getting bad on it, so I thought I'd change it. Here it is here. You'll see from the end of that, it's a four wire plug. So it's a 220 plug with a ground and a neutral. So what we have to do is wire that on. Uh, it's not a big complex job, that's for sure. Uh, but there's a few little things that you have to be aware of when you're doing it. And uh, it's worthwhile, I think, just to go through. And I'll show you how I connect up this plug on my generator extension cord that goes from the generator back to the camp. It's a Leviton L1430P. Four wire lockable male extension cord cable plug. All right, so here's my cable. This is the female end. This part actually plugs into the camp. I have a, a receptacle on my camp and it goes into a transfer switch in the camp. So this plugs into the receptacle. And this is the plug that goes, uh, this right here is the plug that goes into the generator. And it's the 220 amp outlet on the generator. And it's the four wire plug. And this is the end of the wire. We have to make that go on there. Whoop. That go on there. Whoop. No, that didn't work. Ah, that didn't work. Alexa, connect the plug. Nope, that didn't work either. Alexa's still mad at me. So we're going to have to do it manually today. So to take this plug apart, you just take these two screws out. And you know what? In typical uh, electrical equipment, uh, you need about 15 different screwdrivers to do this job. So this one happens to be a green Robertson to get those screws out. And let me see. Yeah, th that's... Yeah, and uh, this strain relief connector is a green Robertson, which is kind of surprising to me. I thought it probably would have been something else. But anyway, there it is. So I'm going to put that on here first because I don't know about you guys, but whenever I'm doing these, I'll get everything wired up. And then I'll realize that, oh, jump, I forgot to put the, the barrel on it. So anyways, there we go. We get that on. Now, like I say, these wires are already skinned back uh, because of the old plug that was on them. I'm just trying to neaten these up a little bit here. So I don't have to skin those back, these wires. But uh, if you're doing it from a fresh wire, then uh, the instructions usually that come with the outlet will tell you... Uh, like how much of the wire to, to cut, how much of the sheath to cut back and how much of the wire to bear. Uh, but anyway, that's already been done here. So the meat and potatoes of the connector is this baby right here. And uh, if we look at it, we do I get something to point with here? This uh, arm here with the little kink in it, that's the ground and you can see that because it has a green screw. Green is always ground and that just happens to be a green Robbie too. Look at that. Uh, yeah, green is always ground. Uh, also, if you read in the instructions, you'll see that uh, the, the brass colored terminals are for your hot leads and the silver colored terminal is for the neutral. Can you see that that's silver right there? And that's brass. I oh, hope you can see that. So, uh, well for God's sake, look at that. They're going to make a liar out of me. They're all green Robbies this time. Isn't that slick? So what I like to do is just loosen those off so that in the innards of the, of the uh, plug uh, there's good access to uh, put the wire leads in. And then uh, this is just your own personal preference however you like to do it but I like to put the ground wire in first I don't know that's just me I guess but anyway uh, now that I have it uh, the ground wire skinned and twist it up good I just insert that it, it goes up this little collar right here and that collar will direct it right into the uh, screw terminal so here we go and once that's in there we take our green Robbie and we tighten that up, something like that. And you don't have to make this singing tight, but it has to be good and tight. Okay, and if you look through the glass uh, barrel there, you shouldn't see any of the copper wire. 
but also having said that when you put the wire into the connector the wire shouldn't go in so far that your connector squeezes down on on the uh, the sheathing of the conductor okay so that's why they say you should trim back I think this is a half an inch so that's the ground wire and it's on the ground conductor right across right opposite that is the neutral wire and the neutral wire is white you should always remember that so again I'm going to direct that right up in the hole and if it uh, holds your nose right it'll go right into that screw terminal and then you take your green Robbie and you tighten that up and there's a lot of turns there because I had opened those screw terminals up to their widest to make it easy to get the wires in. Now the black and the red they're both the, the 120 side of the 220 volt feed so it doesn't really matter which one you put where sometimes there will be designations on them on the plug they'll mark them like X and Y or something like that but uh, it's not that important uh, for a generator in a house which one goes where so I'm going to put that red one right up in there and then I'm going to tighten that on there doo -doo 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 -doo. and here I was saying that uh, you need 13 or 14 different screwdrivers to do electrical work well it turns out I'm only going to need the one so now the black I'm going to put the black right up in there Make sure I don't have any wire sticking out. And the black should squeeze right up in there. And then I tighten that. And I like to check them too, just give them the old tension test. And also take the needle nose and just tug on each one. Just to make sure that they're good and tight in there because you wouldn't want them to come loose. Okay, so when you're finished you end up with something that looks a lot like a plug in the end of an extension cord. Let me get around here so you can see that better. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. So that's not bad, eh? So just to check, we've got the green ground going to the green terminal. That's good. we got the neutral wire going to the silver terminal. That's even better. We've got the red to the brass terminal and the black to the brass terminal. Those are the 120 sides of the 220 outlet. So if you were to measure voltage on this, you'd measure from this terminal to this terminal, one, uh, 220 volts. From that terminal to the neutral, 110. From that terminal to the neutral, 110. That terminal to ground, 110. That terminal to ground, 110. From there, from the ground to the neutral, you should get nothing. So other than that, she's kosher. Okay, now you take the barrel and you slide the barrel up here and these barrels I think only go on one way. I think they're keyed. Yes they are. So they only go on the one way. Gonna make a liar out of me here. Hope you can see me here. Beg your pardon folks for getting out of the picture. There, that kind of slides in like that, and then again with the green Robbie. You don't need one screwdriver to change these boys, that's the beauty of an electrician. You don't need one screwdriver. Anyway, you snug those up, and that's that. And then you should always tighten up the strain relief. I often wonder what these strain reliefs are on here for. And then uh, doing some research one day, and I found out those strain reliefs were put on to relieve the strain of the wire twist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 10,000 comedians out of work and I'm trying to be funny. Take a couple of turns on each side. Yep. 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 There we go. That's just about as good as it gets. Now, uh, one little test I can do to make sure that this is good is I'm going to uh, get my meter and I'm going to do a continuity test, so I'll be right back. Okay, so ground to ground, that's good. Shouldn't get anything to the, the other three, and you don't. And that's good. So then you go from neutral, which is right above it, that's good. Should get nothing the other three, and that's good. 
So then you go on one side, should be nothing on the other three, and you go on the other side, and nothing on the other three. So isn't that dandy? Job done. And then uh, what I like to do is just uh, stick them together and twist them. That keeps the prongs from getting broken. And also, uh, usually with, with these cables, the, the, this is number 10 cable by the way, number 10 size wire. And it's heavy. So if you're slinging that around, throwing it, so oftentimes, you know, well, in fact, that's what happened to mine when I threw it. That kind of hit the ground and, and the prongs bent. So I was straightening out the prongs and I was thinking, uh oh, this might not be the best thing. So I hook them together. That's what I'm trying to say. Hook them together like that to store them. Okay. All right, so that's it. Uh, just putting the plug on the cable. Uh, not a big job, but uh, I think it's worth. But it was worthwhile doing in my case because, like I said, some of those tabs were bent, so I was trying to straighten them and, uh, you know, maybe compromise their integrity. And you don't want to have anything happen to your extension cords because it is that time of year when we're more prone to power outages. So I did some service on my generator a couple of weeks ago there and got that all ready for the season. And now I just check in my extension cord and that's all good. So I'm good to go. Next time the power goes out. I just flash up the generator, run out my cable, plug her in, go in the camp, throw my transfer switch, and go back to watching TV. <laughs> okay, folks, stay safe and we'll talk to you.